lead the Renaults! They arrive in big battle formation, that big V-shape at 400 miles an hour with the jets around 20 feet apart. You'll now see them collapse to around 6 feet apart as they form short diamond formation at the top of this loop at 6,000 feet. They're led by Ren 1 squadron leader Jim Turner. It's Jim's third and final year as the team's leader. He is a former Jaguar pilot who's very experienced in the display world. Having displayed the Jaguar, spent three years previously with the Red Arrows, and more recently he has spent three years as the official advisor to the Royal Saudi Air Force's display team. That's Red One's voice. acknowledge the move to Eagle, they do so with very metronomic cadence in their voices. The idea is that as they count four in their heads, the pilots extend their air brakes, and on counting six, they retract their air brakes, which means that all three aircraft on each wing drop back in time to form Eagle. And in from the right now, you'll see the Eagle roll. jet trainer in the Royal Air Force in that era. In 1976, the Hawker Sidley Hawk entered service, and in 1980, the Royal Air Force started using the Hawk in the air battle team, the Red Arrows, which is the same aircraft you can see today. The Hawk is a very successful aviation export. It's been sold to over 19 countries across the world, and it still continues to impress in its guise as advanced jet trainer. Smoke goes off to the front, reds 4 and 5 have moved forward slightly. This is now the shape of the Russian fighter jet, the Su-27. They're about to reverse the turn. The NATO code word for the Su-27 is flanker. They're about to form a very wide shape now, so Reds 8 and 9 will move to the outside of the formation. And from Red 9's left wingtip through to Red 8's right wingtip, the formation will now measure 100 metres or 300 feet wide. To enable the formation to be moved as one, the outside pilots really have to anticipate their control inputs. They do that by using the cadence in Red 1's voice commands. But now, coming in from the left, this very wide shape, they're going to be putting on some very patriotic red, white and blue. If we can please have a big round of applause as they show you Phoenix! now is the first of our two first year pilots for this year. He's Red 2 Flight Lieutenant Stu Campbell. Stu is a former instructor on the Takano aircraft teaching basic fast jet training. He was also the Takano display pilot. He then went on to fly the Tornado GR4 operationally. Out to the right, the team have formed our trademark shape and in true 70s style all nine jets will now smoke in the diamond roll. Our 
formations with the odd numbered pilots on the left hand side, the even numbered pilots fly on the right hand side and in their three year tour with the team, the pilots will generally start at the front near the leader and as their proficiency improves they move further back. On the leader's left wing now is Red 3, Fly Lieutenant Joe Hurston who is our other first year pilot this year. Joe is a former Hawk flying instructor and operationally he flew the Tornado GR4 also. In fact, Joe is the only pilot on the team who has flown this version of Hawk, the Hawk T-Mark 1. He's also instructed on the Royal Air Force's new advanced jet trainer, the Hawk T-Mark 2. Out to the left, the smoke goes off as they formed a very iconic shape. They roll out towards us now for the Concorde loop. <laughs> Pulling up at 4G at 400 miles an hour. Shape starts to change again and as they reach the top of this loop at 6,000 feet or a mile above us, you can see Reds 2, 3 and 4 move forward. Reds 8 and 9 also move forward to form a feathered arrow shape. At the top of this loop, the jets have slowed down to about 150 miles an hour. The G's backed off to around 1G, but as they come down the other side, they're accelerating now back to 400 miles an hour. The G's building up to 4G as they show us feathered arrow, which is a bit of a mouthful, so we call it red. Well, that's the end of the first half of the Red Arrows display, ladies and gentlemen. So far, you've seen all nine aircraft together performing close formation aerobatics. We're now going to change the tempo of the display. One to five, eight to nine, pull up your feet. It's keep your eyes on the synchro pair with the blue smoke underneath. This is the palm split. Changing from blue on the left hand side, pitching up now is Red Six, leader of the Synchro pair, Flight Lieutenant James McMillan. It's James's third and final year in the team. He actually grew up in New Zealand, but he transferred to the Royal Air Force in 2002 and became a Hawk flying instructor and Harrier pilot. On the left, he's chased down by Red Eight. Looking right, Alan. Get your cameras ready as they perform the amazing Jippo Pass. Synchro pair leave their smoke on. They're turning away from us now at 6G or six times the force of gravity. That means everything in their bodies weighs six times more than normal. Those pilots are working hard to counter the G force as they roll out towards us to fly the cyclone. Out to the left now to find Enid. The wings of Enid drop down to form an inverted V shape. And if you look to your right, the lone jet is Red 9, who's now going to fly the goose. Red 9, Mike Child is in his third year with the team. He's a former Hawk instructor, Hawk display pilot, and operationally flew the Typhoon, the Royal Air Force's new multi role combat aircraft that you'll see display this afternoon. Enid climbs steeply to our right, look directly to the front to find the Synchro Pair. They pull up at 500 miles an hour, five times the force of gravity. They reach a height of 7,000 feet. The smoke comes on as they get ready to draw a heart. 
Now keep your eyes looking to the top left of the heart. Here comes Red 8 with a final touch. Red 8 is quite a turn of Martin Pert. Oh He's God. another third year pilot with the team. He flew the Hawk and the Harrier before joining the Red Arrows. Ladies and gentlemen, Red 6, 7 and 8 with their heart and spear. Left and right again, the synchro pair are now going to be coming back towards us, descending to their display height of 1,000, uh, 100 feet. They'll be closing at 800 miles an hour. The next call you'll hear is each of the pilots calling threshold. This means they've reached a geographic point. Barrel roll. Camera's ready. where you'll see Enid have been joined by Reds 8 and 9. They pull up into a loop in a 7-ship Vixen formation. Red 1 now twists them through 90 degrees in a quarter clover. Now get your cameras ready. This is the vertical break! <laughs> Left and right again now for the synchro pair. This time red 6 comes from our right and red 7 from our left. They're closing at 800 miles an hour. They're going to cross three times in opposing 360 degree 6G turns. Get ready now for the carousel. So the pilots are putting 6G in each cockpit and they're going to cross three times. Watch how they swap the smoke colour in each of these three crosses using the individual colour control buttons on each of the aircraft's control columns. Now look to your right, 45 degrees, just above the Cream Flight Safety International Building. <laughs> Enid are in a shape called Leader's Benefit. They're going to draw a red, white and blue snake-like shape of smoke in the sky as they fly the Python. <laughs> On the far right of that leader's benefit shape is Red 4. He's Flight Lieutenant Ollie Parr. He's a second year pilot with the team. Ollie is a former Tornado GR4 pilot. He has also spent a tour as a Hawk flying instructor at Royal Air Force Valley on the island of Anglesey in North Wales where we teach our advanced flying students. Keep looking to the left hand side now to look for Jippo. Red 6 and 7 pinch up to roll upside down. This is the corkscrew. Red 7 there working hard, flying his jet only 8 feet away from Red 6, doing it while he's upside down. Now look to the left to find the five headlights of Enid. The inside pilots perform tight match rolls to the outside of the formation in the rollbacks.
did finish their rollbacks, keep your eyes to the right hand side and look again for the four aircraft of Jippo. Once again, six and seven go upside down. Now eight and nine will match their formation underneath in the mirror pass. Boys and girls, give the synchro pair a wave as they fly past upside down. Six gives the command for the formation to widen as they form a small ship square card formation. Now look right 45 degrees. Directly above the Green Flight Safety International building again. Reds one to four form a box formation. Now rolling around them a dozen times is Red Five. Cameras ready for the twister. Very dizzy with the red smoke on, he's red five, flight lieutenant Steve Morris, it is Steve's second year with the team, he is a former Hawk flying instructor and operationally he's flown both the Harrier GR9 and the Tornado GR4 before donning his red suit last year. Now directly above the control tower you'll see Jippo. <laughs> Reds 8 and 9 pitch up to roll around 6 and 7. Cameras ready for the Jippo break. With his smoke changing from blue to white on the right hand side is Red 7. Synchro number 2, flight lieutenant Mark. It's Mark's second year with the team. His background is solely on the Tornado GR4, where he spent three tours flying the jet and flew over Libya, Iraq, and Afghanistan. And also became a qualified weapons instructor. Well, the synchro pair are now descending for their final maneuver of the display. These are the double rolls. to our website which is raf.mod.uk slash reds you'll get lots of extra information about the team including the history of the team in our 50th display season on facebook we're raf red arrows and on twitter we're at raf red arrows they're coming back in a, a little bit of time just to our right hand side they'll be in that big battle shape that big v in which they started the display and you're going to see a big battle right hand break where you'll see them peel off one by one sequentially reds one through nine as they pitch up to roll out downwind and then individually land on the runway. Well, as the jets took off you might have seen that we have a very special paint scheme for this year. That is our 50th anniversary tail fin. If you'd like to buy a print with that tail fin, a squadron print, it's a hand-drawn image of the Hawk, side profile. It's been hand-signed by all of the Red Arrows pilots. These are available in limited quantity from the Red Arrows tent, which is at the back of the most eastern grandstand. 
three red and white inflatable igloo type tents. If you'd like to buy one, some of our blues are there if you're available to go and see them with £10. They'll trade that in for a print for you. So out to the right, you can see the team in big battle shape. I'll let you listen in to their commands as they run in. So the idea now is that red one will break and then in two second intervals the other pilots will pitch up. So from 350 knots or 400 miles an hour, the pilots will then pitch up at around five and a half to six G. Then they'll enter a snap right hand turn to roll out downwind at 200 miles an hour, which enables them to lower their undercarriage. And as they turn finals to land, they'll accelerate again to around 150 miles an hour. So out to the right, the smoke's going to come on. Right hand brake. Oh, we can stick with the light there. Roll out down when you can already see red one at the front has slowed down. His other carriage is about to come down and they'll turn and finals to land. Now as I said, the formations are flown with the odd guys on the left, the even numbered pilots on the right. Same as when we land on the runway. The odd numbered pilots land on the left hand side, the even numbered pilots land on the right hand side. And when you see red one approach the touchdown point, you'll see he's going to put a little blip of white smoke out. The idea of that is it gives an indication to the following aircraft what the wind and therefore the drift is doing and therefore what's going to happen to his wake turbulence and jet wash so they know how they're going to fly their finals turn. With the wind from the left as it is today, the guys landing on the left will land a slightly shallower angle. And the guys on the right, because they've got the effect of the jet wash and the wake turbulence of the leading aircraft, will land at a slightly steeper angle. So watch now, Red One's coming in to land. And he'll put a little bit of white smoke out. and you'll see it drift as we look from right to left as the pilot's looking from left to right. 